Hi there, how you doing? My name is Frank Lynham and in this video I'm going to give you an introduction to the linkdark.net website. So you can see here I brought up linkdark.net in my browser and this is the first screen you see so I'll get rid of the news pop up there and we get a list here of the projects that are hosted by linkdark.net. So I'll click on this one you can see it's the Priniaticus Pyrgos project and I'll click here which will bring me into the, the main project page for the Priniaticus Pyrgos project. So you can see here we've got listed um, all the different data tables that are contained by the project. And uh, we also have uh, this section down here which um, gives us information about the ontology. We can click on that and that'll bring up an OWL or DF serialization of the ontology used by the project. This project is actually modeled on the English Heritage extension of the Psydoc CRM. So it, it uses a baseline existing public ontology and it adds a bit to it uh, for the kind of unique features that um, it brings to the party. So I'll click, you can see here, uh, beside each of the, the data tables, we have a listing that, um, an indication of the amount of records within each data table. So we'll click on the context data table, which is really the core data table within the Priniaticus Peer data, Peergos data set. And uh, we go into the data table page here, and we're given a paginated list of uh, the records within the data table and we'll just we'll click on the first one here this is the topsoil um, context number one and now we are brought into the record page for this topsoil context and you can see the page is divided up into uh, a number of tabs uh, we have a general tab here geo deposit etc etc in the general tab we've got some general information about the excavation of this particular context um, you can see, I click on the Geo tab and we're, we're shown a map of the site, satellite map of the site. Um, we're, um, we're shown where this context actually occurs um, on the site. And because it's a topsoil context, it actually occurs right across uh, trench number two. So it's a very big context. In the next tab, the posit, we have some information about the particular context, uh, some information about its soil, um, uh, measurement values and then matrices. Uh, this related to Harris matrices, what it's over, etc. And we can uh, we can click on these uh, links. These will bring us to other context pages if we want. In uncatalogued finds, this sort of summarizes data which is contained within these subcontexts here. A Priniaticus Pyrgos. I was talking about these proprietary idiosyncratic. Um, uh, data units used and this is one of them uh, it's, it was an administrative unit used to divide up the, the excavation of, our sub, of a subcontext over a number of days and so this kind of aggregates this display here aggregates all the various uh, information contained within these different subcontexts and it's important um, to note here that this is a human readable representation of what is a linked data data resource. So all this information is coming from um, is, is being mined from the linked uh, arc.net server which hosts linked data resources. Um, so this kind of shows you the power of linked data. This is uh, kind of uh, behind the scenes gathering up lots of information and summarizing it. So we can see there it's a big context it's got about 37 kilograms of uh, coarse ceramic, uh, then we have 21k of medium ceramic. These have obviously been categorized uh, after they've been excavated from the ground. And we have other categories of finds there as well. So I mentioned the subcontexts. These are all uh, the, the various subcontexts that made up uh, the excavation of this context. Cut and masonry, they haven't been implemented yet. In the catalog tab, we have a listing of all the various um, objects that were excavated uh, from context one and that were considered um, worthy of cataloging. So we have cer particular ceramics here and then objects. And you see we have um, the object ID and then a brief description. Um, finally, we have a tab uh, which for the images. So these are all the images that are related to this particular context. So you can see it's just topsoil, so there's, there's excavation going on here. 
um, and it's just the beginning really of the excavation of, of trench two and there's, there's quite a few images related to it because as I said it was quite a big context. So as I was saying you can you can link uh, all of these uh, record pages they tend to have links to other objects and this sort of um, uh, this is built around the idea that that's the way linked data works. It, it links to other data resources. It, it builds on other data. So let's link to uh, this first one here, this 086001, uh, which now we're brought into the, you can see that the, the data table has changed there. We're now in catalog ceramics and we get a slightly different uh, display. Uh, each data table will have a, a different display depending uh, on the, the different types of data that is contained within it and you get information about which context we know it's in context one uh, the assigned period some specialist has said that it was um, middle biz and um, we that's the specialist the, the uri uh, uris uh, very important in linked data they allow data to be shared across data sets and also data they allow data to be uh, searchable, um, so it's not just free text search, but it's it's more specific searching. Uh, we can have a look at the analysis here. We have some more. Uh, these are uh, vocabulary values again to to allow for better searching, um, and we have an image. And there is an image um, of I think it's a scraffito uh, piece there from the Middle Byzantine period. So let's um, let's do a bit of a search. Okay, so this is Middle Byzantine. So let's search for when we click on the search, we enter the search mode, and in the assigned period um, field here, we can enter MBiz, and we can say we want to find it anywhere in the text, or we or we could choose to do an exact match. But let's just do find anywhere in the text, and we do a search, and this will basically search for all the catalogued ceramics that were assigned a date that includes middle biz. So this has a, a number of other dates. You can see it's a range here. But you can see we've got 438 uh, records in our find set and we could hop between uh, any of them there by just dragging along here or clicking up or down. And again, this is the same. Uh, it's in the same data table. So the display is the same. And here we have an image. Uh, we could click on that image and we go into the, the image data table uh, which lists some information about uh, this image which uh, catalogs ceramic it's, it's, it's associated with it etc etc. These images are actually hosted on Flickr so if I want the large image I can click here and you can see that's actually gone to a Flickr URL and uh, I can have a look at the large image of it there. So we'll go back now to the um, the main project page and uh, as I say there are lots of other data tables but these are all dependent on the particular project um, I'll click on there are, there are these uh, data tables lo loci and pale and that's because um, while the Priniaticus Pyrgos project used single context uh, recording uh, from 2007 on before that uh, the locus pale method was actually used so we have these units called loci and uh, pales so again, uh, loci, they're kind of analogous to uh, context, but uh, slightly less information, but a, a locus is kind of a parent of a pale. So we have lists of pales that are uh, associated with this locus. We've got the geo information, lots of it similar, but again, it's a different data table, so uh, it'll be slightly different. And there we have the aggregation of the uncatalog finds. Now, as I was saying, uh, this data is all sitting on top of uh, a linked data uh, server and it, it consumes the services of linkedart.net. And so while we're viewing a human readable representation of the, the information here, uh, it's actually, um, it's being consumed as linked data. So there are other representations that I could have a look at, these kind of more mach machine readable representations. So I could view the data as JSON, it's exactly the same type of data, it's just in a machine readable form, XML, I could have a look at it in text there, uh, CSV or TSV. Um, and I think I'll leave it there, but just to say that was a very brief introduction to what linkedarc.net is trying to do, what it's all about. Um, it's a 
I hope it's a very flexible way of hosting data on uh, the semantic web in the sense that it is not just um, open data, but it's also structured data. It has ontologies underlying it, which makes it much more valuable as an online data resource. So please um, check out the other videos that are located in the, the about section of linkedart.net. And thanks for watching.